There was once a student named Liu Yi, who lived in the central region of China, near the Great Lakes. One day, as he was returning from the capital, having successfully taken his examinations, he saw on the road ahead of him a young woman herding a flock of sheep. She was the most beautiful woman Liu had ever seen, but she was deeply distressed, tears coursing down her fair cheeks, her whole body shaking with sobs. Liu's heart went out to the girl, and he got down from his donkey and asked her if there was any way in which he could be of assistance. The girl thanked him through her tears and explained the cause of her grief. My father is the dragon king of Lake Dongting, she explained. And many months ago, he married me to the son of the god of the Jing River, whom I do not love. My husband is cruel to me, and his family torment me, but I cannot complain to my father, as Lake Dongting is too far away for me to travel, and the family intercept my messages to him. I know my father would help if he knew of my grief, but I am so utterly alone and friendless. Liu was so touched by the girl's plight that he offered to take the message to her father himself, but he could not see how it could be done. Although the shores of Lake Dongting are my home, he said, I am a mere human. How could I ever reach your father's palace in the terrifying depths of the lake? The girl replied, if you are strong in heart, Go to the sacred tangerine tree on the northern shore of the lake. Tie your sash around its trunk and knock on it three times. From there, you will be led to the palace. Liu willingly agreed to undertake the journey, and the girl handed him a letter from the folds of her gown. As he remounted his donkey, he called out, When you return to Dongting, I sincerely hope that we shall meet again. Then, spurring the animal on, he set off. After a few minutes, he looked back, but the girl had disappeared together with her sheep. Liu went straight to the northern shore of Lake Dongting, and finding the sacred tangerine tree, he tied his sash around its trunk and knocked on it three times as the girl had said. At once the waves of the lake parted, and a man rose up from the depths and asked Liu what he wanted. I must talk to your king, Liu said. It is a matter of the utmost importance. The man nodded and placed a blindfold over Liu's eyes. Liu became aware of a silence engulfing him, and his body became colder and colder, but he did not flinch. After a time, the blindfold was removed, and Liu found he was in a great palace, beautifully decorated with pearl and other precious stones, and all the warmth flooded back into his body. His guide showed him into a vast chamber, and there, on a mighty throne, sat the Dragon King. Liu bowed low and humbly proffered the girl's letter, explaining where and how he had met her on the road from the capital. The Dragon King read the letter, and as he did so, great tears rolled down his face and his huge hands shook. Then he instructed a servant to take the letter to the queen and said to Liu, I thank you for all your trouble. You have taken pity on my daughter, while I did nothing to save her from her suffering. I shall never forget your kindness to her and your bravery in making this journey. At that moment, he was interrupted by a loud wailing from the queen's chamber and the sound of weeping. Quickly, ordered the king with a worried frown, tell them to be quiet or they will arouse Chiantang. Who is Qiantang? asked Liu, surprised that anything should disturb such a mighty ruler. The Dragon King explained that Qiantang was his younger brother, once ruler of Lake Qiantang. His quick temper had caused such floods and devastation, even threatening the Five Holy Peaks, that the High God had banished him from the lake and forgiven him on the understanding that his brother guarantee his good behavior. This news would infuriate him, as he is extremely fond of his niece, and would instantly demand revenge. As he spoke, there was a tremendous crash, and the chamber filled with smoke. 
In a tumult of lightning, thunder, and rain, a huge red dragon tore through the hall, clouds streaming from his nostrils, and a mighty roar issuing from his throat. Liu fell to the ground in terror, but the dragon left as quickly as it had appeared. That was Qiantang, the Dragon King explained, helping the terrified Liu to his feet. I must apologize for frightening you like that. He called for wine and food and graciously set them before Liu, who soon forgot his fear as they talked about Liu's career and life in the capital. A short while later, they were cut short by the arrival of the queen and her train, smiling and laughing amongst themselves. And Liu saw to his amazement that the Dragon King's daughter, whom he had met on the road, was in the group. The king embraced her, and he begged her forgiveness for allowing her to marry such a wretch, and she warmly thanked Liu for his help in rescuing her. At that moment, an elegant, dignified young man walked into the chamber and was introduced to Liu as Qiantang. Once he overcame his initial fear, Liu was delighted to find him a charming individual, courteously thanking Liu for his help and toasting his health. Qiantang explained to his brother that he had fought the Jing River God and his men, and then visited the High God to explain his actions and apologize if he had done wrong. He has generously forgiven me, he said, and I now apologize to you, my brother, for my fury in your palace, and to you, honored guest, for scaring you. I am glad the High God has forgiven you, said the king, and I willingly do so too, but you must be less hasty in future. And now tell me of the battle with the God of the Jing River. It was nothing, said Qiantang. I slew 600,000 of his men and destroyed 200 square miles of his land, and the battle was as good as won. And what of my daughter's erstwhile husband? I ate him, replied Qiantang casually, and the conversation was over. The next day a great feast was held in Liu's honor. The Dragon King lavished gifts on him, and Qiantang drank to his health innumerable times. After much delicious food, and even more wine, Qiantang took Liu aside and said to him, The king's daughter has been saved thanks to you. She is a fine woman, aware of how much she owes to you, and as it is clear that you are in love with her, I suggest that you marry her straight away. Liu did not know what to say, although he was, as Qiantang had guessed, very much in love with the girl. Marriage to the daughter of a god was not to be taken lightly, nor was the suggestion of a rather drunken dragon to be taken too seriously, especially when Liu considered the possibility of Qiantang's anger at his presumption if the dragon changed his mind when sober. So, regretfully, Liu talked the tipsy Qiantang out of his idea, and the next day left the palace for his home, laden with gifts and accompanied by many servants. In his heart, though, he still longed for the dragon princess. Months passed, and the now wealthy Liu, knowing he could not pine forever, married a local girl. But she was stricken with fever and soon died. To stave off his loneliness, Liu married again, but his second wife too caught the fever and soon died. Despairing more and more, Liu married a girl from outside the region who soon bore him a son. As time went by, Liu began to notice that his wife looked more and more like the dragon princess, the lost love of his youth. And after his second son had been born, the woman finally admitted that she was indeed the dragon king's daughter. She had been bitterly disappointed when Liu turned down her uncle's suggestion and kept remembering his last words to her on the road from the capital. When you return to Dongting, I sincerely hope that we shall meet again. When Liu's second wife had died, she had seized her opportunity to become the third. The couple lived together in great happiness and raised a large family. They frequently visited the Dragon King's palace beneath the deep waters of Lake Dongting, 
and as Liu became older, they stayed there for longer and longer periods. Eventually, they left the land of mortal men entirely, and took up residence with the immortal Dragon King and Queen, and Xiantang, in their immortal home beneath the waves.